So at the end of the day, this has been brilliant. Thank you so much for, uh, for inviting us down here to see your, your uh, oh, cut that. <laughs> We're gonna go backwards here a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Hey, boys and girls, we're here in sunny Vancouver and uh, we're at the Everything EV kind of show and I'm here with Erica and you're just looking at her aircraft sitting over here, the Magna X. Is that how you say it? Magna X is- Magna X. Yes, they produce the engine, the electric engine that's been installed in our Beaver. Cool. So why don't you give us a little uh, background and uh, on you and the uh, and the Beaver and uh, let us know what we need to know. Uh, my name is Erica Holtz and I'm the program manager and engineering lead for the electrification program at Harbor Air. And in 2019, we took the uh, R985 450 horsepower piston engine off the aircraft and put on a full electric engine with a battery, a fully battery system electric. Uh, so everything on the aircraft is electric now. There's no fuel in it, um, and it's been an actually amazing project. Well, I, I was looking at the little sandwich board you got here, and um, six passengers, pay, <laughs> payroll of like over a ton. I, I'm really impressed with uh, with what you can do here. It it um, um, I'm 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 really shocked. I didn't I don't know of anybody that's renovated anything that size. Uh, to make uh, to make anything work, have you were you down at um, were you down at Oshkosh or anything? We were. We actually took this aircraft and a static display to Oshkosh. Had a big display at the main pavilion and also had this aircraft down at the seaplane base so that we could do yeah. some. We were hoping to fly, but we didn't get our, our flight permit from Transport Canada validated by the FAA. Um, but yeah, these numbers are because MagniX, our partner uh, with the engine, is also producing a battery module. And they have uh, come out recently and said they will be able to give us a 300 watt hour per kilogram energy dense battery at the aircraft level, not the cell level. And so with that battery pack, we can, we can produce these numbers where we can get six passengers for a one hour mission, including reserve. Um, so it's about 82 kilometer range. Wow. That's, uh, that's truly amazing. Um, <laughs> When was that plane made? In the 40s, 50s, whatever? <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, I don't remember the exact date of that one, but it'd be late 40s, early 50s is yeah. when the Beavers were produced. They're over yeah. 70 years old now. Uh, the engines, the original engine is a bit of a problem for maintenance. Uh, it's very expensive. <laughs> yeah, where do you find anything? <laughs> 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 it's a little obsolete these days, uh, yeah. and it's got a 1600 hour TBO, and the electric yeah. engine should have something like a 10,000 hour TBO on it. So. Wow. But yeah, by doing that though, the reason we get those numbers too is the improvement in performance that we got in the aircraft. So with putting the electric engine in, the higher efficiency, the more efficient prop, the the, the pointier nose, the reduced cooling drag, yeah. we actually um, reduced the power required from for level flight from uh, 62% down to 41%. And wow. you use that number, that, that cruise power setting to calculate your reserve. And that is how we went from like an eight minute flight to a 30 minute flight. So on takeoff, Normally, if you're in a larger jet, uh, you run up uh, at about 110 percent. What do you? What about takeoff on here? We're running just 100 uh, percent. That thing is capable of 450 horse, and we can actually take off with about 400 horse and still beat the performance of the original aircraft. With this, with the same power, 450 horse, 336 kilowatt, we actually produce 300 pounds more thrust. Okay, so we're here by the plane, and um, my first reaction was, holy mackerel, are we going to get six people in the back of this? There seems to be quite a bit of uh, claptrap or whatever going on. Can you describe what, uh, what is happening there, Erica? Absolutely. So um, when MagniX built this first engine, they were not aviation people. So they, they wanted to make it as absolutely light as possible. So they didn't drive any accessories or have anything attached to the engine. So when we had to uh, uh, integrate it into the aircraft, every accessory put in there, like the cooling pumps, the governor pump, they all had to be driven off of our 24 volt battery system. So instead of having one battery on board, we actually have four batteries on board to drive all those pumps. And uh, they had a separate oil system for cooling the engine that we couldn't tap into the same oil system that we use for the propeller. And therefore we actually have oh, two wow. oil systems in here. So what that did meant that the entire front area was taken up with all this crap for the engine, mm. instead of us being able to put batteries up there. And without being able to put the battery weight up there, we couldn't put batteries in the back. 
basically all the batteries had to go right in the middle at the C of G to maintain the original weight and balance of the aircraft. So this is for our experimental aircraft. This works fine as a technology demonstrator so that we can test out different architectures, different components. Um, but what we'll have to do is replace the engine and their new engine, the Magni 650, is going to integrate the accessories off the engine. They've gone down to a single oil system. We have a whole bunch of space up front now to put batteries. So we'll be able to put batteries further in the back and put the people back in. Okay, so just out of curiosity, um, I used to know a lot about these planes a long time ago. Um, I thought that it had like a, a fuel bag or a fuel cell yep. underneath the seats or whatever. Yeah, so level with the door there, the door sill is the floor. Underneath the floor was where the fuel was. Yeah. And so we do have capacity and space to put the batteries under there. Unfortunately, the batteries we've been receiving to date haven't fit well under there. It's a bad fit form, right? We end up with a lot of empty space because uh -huh. of the, the size and shape of the batteries. The new batteries we're, we're having made, um, Magniex is, is using our fuel bay dimensions to help uh, drive the, the sizing of the battery modules themselves. And therefore, we'll be able to make better use of that space under there as well as, as putting forward and aft. So what type of batteries are they? They're lithium ion battery cells that are then packaged into a module by, by Magniex. So are, are they, are they um, prismatic? Are they pouch? Are they cylindrical? Are they... I know they are not cylindrical. Okay. But so I don't know if they're prismatic or pouch. They're keeping the actual technology and who the cell provider is uh, under wraps. It's a proprietary oh. information. Okay. Um, but they are telling us that they're going to get uh, 300 watt hours per kilogram at the aircraft level. 300. Which right now, the ones we have installed in the aircraft are about 200, 210 water hour per kilogram at the aircraft level. Mm. Well, I'm not sure if we uh, if we got it on tape, but you were talking about, I think we did, right? The the takeoff and whatnot. And um, at 100%, you're, yeah, you're we can, basically... I think you might have seen the numbers on the sandwich boards. Uh, yeah. We drop our takeoff distance. If we use full power, 100% power, the takeoff uh, time for takeoff is reduced from about 40 seconds to about 27 seconds. Wow. And uh, our climb performance is, is really incredible. We can climb at about 14% climb gradient, where the original aircraft barely made the required 6.7% climb gradient. Yeah. Uh, and that's due to, as I said earlier, we have 300 pounds addition, additional thrust at the same power. Well, a long time ago, when I used to go hunting up north, they used to land on the snow with these. Are, can, yeah. Have you ever tried that here yet? Not with the electric one, but we have uh, signed a letter of intent with a company called Bel Air Aviation in Quebec, and they want to uh, look at wheel ski operations for the winter, and so that's something we're going to explore in the next couple of years. Oh, okay. Looks like one of the noisier uh, craft have just decided to break up the party a bit. Yeah. So I, I think that's that's really interesting to hear because um, a lot of people might assume, oh, it's electric, it's going to be completely silent. No. But a lot of the noise comes from the prop, as yeah, you know, right? right? Yeah. So yeah. we have done though, when we were, we were specking out a prop, we were looking to balance performance with noise. It's important for us not just to remove GHG emissions, but also reduce noise emissions for our neighbors. And so with this propeller, we're spinning it slower. Instead of 2300 RPM for takeoff, we're at 1900 RPM for takeoff. And moving to this uh, efficient four blade, we're actually a little bit shorter. So the tips are spinning slower. We, on average, not done in accordance with uh, the FAR requirements, but company testing, we're about 20 decibels less in all phases of flight. Cool. Um, one of the things that uh, uh, Joby did was they made their own prop yep. and they kept the tip below um, Sonic. And uh, then they, they have more blades. I'm not sure whether they I probably have six. It's usually a, well, it could be five. I'm not sure. But, it, but at the end of the day, they have more blades than four. And uh, they had, and that's Herzl as well, isn't it? This is Herzl. Yeah. yeah. So um, anyhow, they, I think they got Herzl to, to make their prop. Holy mackerel, it's light. I couldn't believe it. They use the owl feather, you know, to cut down noise as well. So yeah, this, I was really impressed this with it. This prop the, is, we think, it's about 100 pounds or so lighter than the original prop that's on the beaver. The original original was made out of cast the iron. The original or original, yeah. yeah, yeah the second yeah. original. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, second original, yeah. Well, that's good news. So at the end of the day, um, let's bring in uh, the guy that has to fly this thing. Where do you run off to? He's over there. Oh, here we are. <clears throat> so, a uh, guy that play that flies this plane, uh, Sandy Monroe. <laughs> nice uh, your to meet name you. is Sean Braden. Sean Brady. Brayden. 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 Oh, okay, good. And you're a bush pilot, right? Well, I'm the vice president of maintenance and manufacturing here at Harbor Air, but I sometimes fly. Ah, very fly good. Fly for fun. Every day. Every day. That's, that's, 
Every every once in a while, it's good to fly. Every once in a while, yeah. 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 So what's it like to fly this thing? Oh, it's a lot of fun. It's um, it flies just like any other beaver, except you've got uh, a little bit more performance for sure, and it's a little smoother and quieter, obviously yeah. with the electric motor and stuff. But the big difference is the the added thrust. I mean, we're at gross weight, and this airplane does not perform like a beaver at gross weight at 5600 mm. this performs a lot more like a 5090 beaver just because it gets off the we're off the water and it'll be like a 22 second slide we're climbing away quite quite quickly it uh rate of climb is fairly decent you're pulling yeah, the power 14 back. or yeah, something. yeah yeah it's it, it's doing it does perform well it does perform a lot better than a standard piston beaver at the same weight um even though we're at the same horsepower we're just making a lot more thrust with this propeller and some of the like the pointy nose we're not getting as much drag so it doesn't slow down as fast as a beaver um it comes the approach to landing all that's basically the same yeah um it is still just a beaver it's that and a beaver is a phenomenal airplane we all love the beaver we yeah. love the beaver we love the otter the company here we've been operating to Havilands for 40 years we love these airplanes well i'm like i say i used to hunt a long time ago and um and this was the way you got up north i mean yep. Really this, and truly. This particular airplane's got over 42,000 hours on it. It's been flying up and down the coast since yeah. it was built. And it's been- When was it built, do you know? Uh, it's serial number 1030. I can't remember the year it was built. Um, but it's, uh, I'd have to look at the data plate. But it's been it's been serving this area, Prince Rupert area, up and down the coast of the province for almost its entire life. I, I, I'm really wondering, uh, when do you think you're gonna be able to, you know, fill us up with people when you, uh, well, that's that's gonna... the whole thing. We're really hoping to try and be done around the end of 2026. Is the, the... Yeah, we think we're going to have a bit of a two-stage, go to certification with one set of batteries and then and then switch them out for the commercial service. We're estimating commercial service uh, in 2027, depending on whether our partner Magniax can get the engine type certified in uh. Uh, early 2026. Yeah. So working... if you have to, if you had to modify, like usually people don't want to even think about uh, recertification after after you've got one power train to work and then you go into a second one, now you're going to go into a third one. Well, the uh, idea is that to the motor, the batteries will be using H55 batteries. We've got um, Magniex's motor. We get all that done and certified, but those batteries are really close to being finished now. They're not by any means the latest and greatest technology. So by the time we get to 2026, 2027 and get it certified, we know the batteries are going to be a lot better than they are right now yeah. just yeah. based so, on what magniax has told us with yeah. the modules that they're creating with the 300 watt hour per kilogram yeah. but those aren't ready right now they're going to be ready in a couple of years mm -hmm. so we do expect like the batteries are going to have to be something we can certify uh and change out yeah. uh, repeatedly until the technology stabilizes mm -hmm. um so we do this whole thing is to get us to certification to understand how to certify batteries so that we can certify different battery packs quickly and the hope is once we've got that path blazed through with the regulators, then the next set of batteries to get certified should be a lot faster. So let me ask you a question. Um, you, you have, um, I don't know, I counted uh, three, four, maybe uh, beavers. Um, would you would you convert them all to electric then? The hope is eventually convert them all, yeah, and then even start going what as, about the technology, the as the technology gets better. It could be we start converting the singles and the caravans and the twin otters do. It yeah. all depends on the battery. It's not that far. Like I think we estimated we can put nine people in a single otter or a caravan if we can get to about 400 watt hour per kilogram at the aircraft level. So I don't think it's that far off. If 300 watt hour per kilogram is available in the next two years, 400 could be in the next four or five years. It, it's part of the, the thing that makes it work for us is the niche that we're in is that we do a lot of very short flights. There are other operators that this isn't going to work for because they're doing longer flights. Yeah, so that's what I was just going to ask about. Um, how how much time for turnaround do you have for charging? Um, well, with the battery conditioning that we're going to be developing on this uh, machine very shortly, we're hoping to get this to about a 30 minute recharge. We're working, you met Kim on our panel today. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, she, we're working with uh, BC Hydro to install 150 kilowatts chargers uh, at each of our locations. And that would allow us about a 30 minute turnaround time on the charger. And then we've got to get the conditioning to. So to is be that a 900 volt time. system? Uh, it's Over going to operate. No, it's going to operate on uh, 600 volts. The the chargers because we have BC Hydro brings in 600 volts, so we won't need a step down or a step up transformer. It, the chargers can work on the 600 volt input, and then it outputs up to the 801 volts we need for the aircraft. Cool. 
Oh, sounds yeah. like a, a real we good We do plan. a whole lot of 20-minute uh, tours. And yeah. so if we can do a 20-minute tour and then recharge in 30 minutes, right now our turn time on the dock is usually at least 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. So we wouldn't be really going any slower than what we're doing now. Yeah. And if we can keep repeatedly doing 20-minute tours and recharging in 30 minutes, it's going to be doing what the gas ones are doing now. So what, what do you think the differential is going to be between um, Avgas and, uh, and uh, electric? Right now, it's going to be pretty close. And the math that we've got so far, When it's... we've done some of the direct operating costs, the problem that we have right now is you're going to have to change out the batteries after they cycle out. And they cycle out probably somewhere between two and 3,000 charge cycles. Uh, and we've done a very conservative estimate that we have to change out the batteries because as soon as they get to 80% state of health, we'll have to trade them out. But we're not count factoring in the potential residual co value of the batteries because yeah. they'll still have another life. They could be used as a microgrid. They can they can yeah. be used in other applications. Just not will buy them back. Exactly. Yeah. And so there's a residual value we haven't factored into the direct operating costs. So if you have to replace the batteries um, every two to 3,000 cycles, it's almost the, the, the same direct operating cost as what we're paying right now. But for the larger aircraft, it gets better. Thank you so much for, uh, for showing us your aircraft. And um, I love what you've been doing with it. Thank you so much. This Thank you really so been much. Brilliant. Appreciate you. you coming to see it, what we're doing. Thank you. Thank you so much.